Westermark sign, Hampton sum, Panda sign, Chang sign, and Minimo signs, which are all suggestive of pulmonary embolism. So, how are these signs shown on an X ray and what does it indicate? Welcome to my new video. Today, I will be discussing about this in detail. This is an X ray which shows the representation of the heart as well as the major vessels. This is a superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, aorta, aortic arch. And uh, since our topic of discussion is on pulmonary vessels, as uh, it is pulmonary embolism, we will be discussing regarding the pulmonary artery. This is a pulmonary artery dividing into left pulmonary artery as well as the right main pulmonary arteries. I have removed all of the structures so that we get a better understanding. This is the main pulmonary trunk, which divides into right main pulmonary artery left main pulmonary artery. The right main pulmonary artery divides into interglobar artery, then lobar artery, segmental artery, subsegmental artery, followed by intralobular artery. This anatomy is important as any obstruction over here causes a dilatation of this main pulmonary artery followed by a cutoff sign or a decreased blood flow through the peripheries or distally. So how is pulmonary embolism diagnosed on x-ray. In 14 percentage of the patients, it's normal x-ray. Majority of the patients, almost 68 percentage shows atelectasis or parenchymal density. Other representation is pleural effusion, pleural based opacity or the Hampton sum, elevated hemidiaphragm, prominent central pulmonary artery, Westermark sign, cardiomegaly and pulmonary edema. These are all signs which can be suggestive of pulmonary embolism. The main use of chest X-ray in suspected embolism is to exclude pneumothorax as it can simulate the disease. If a patient has a normal X-ray with unexplained tachypnea, dyspnea or hypoxemia, you should always have this uh, possibility of embolism. Some of the signs to be discussed is the Westermark sign. This is an X-ray of the patient suspected of pulmonary embolism. An embolism was lodged in the right main pulmonary artery. You can see it enlarged. And as a result, there was decreased blood flow in the right upper zone. And so a lucency was seen, having a features of oligemia features. This sign is known as Westermark sign or decreased vascularity. Another sign is the Hampton's hump, which is a plural based opacity due to the evolving pulmonary infarct as there is decreased blood flow distally. When Hampton's hump is formed due to hemorrhage with no associated infarct. On subsequent x-ray, this can disappear within a week. This is known as the melting ice cube sign, which is also a suggestive of pulmonary embolism. This is an x-ray which shows a dilated central pulmonary artery. This is known as the Fleschner sign. Fleschner also described the elevation of the hemidiaphragm, which was also a suggestive sign for pulmonary embolism. Another sign is a knuckle sign. When an embolism is lodged in the main pulmonary artery or the right interlobar artery, there is an abrupt tapering of the arteries distally. This is known as the knuckle sign. Shank sign. This is a combination of knuckle sign as well as the Fleschner sign in which there is dilated pulmonary artery followed by an abrupt tapering distally. Pallas sign. It is similar to Fleschner sign. It is sausage shaped. It is the enlargement of right descending pulmonary artery. Coming to summary, there is no definite sign for pulmonary embolism. A patient can have a normal x-ray in spite of having pulmonary embolism. Some of the signs which we discussed is the Hampton sum, which is a plural based opacity. It, they can represent as atelectasis, which is the majority of the presentation. Plural effusion, Westermark sign, it is a sign of oligemia when there is decreased vascularity. Fleschner sign as we discussed right main pulmonary artery dilatation. Similarly over here, it can also be seen as infiltrates. Elevated hemidiaphragm. Thank you.